When you hear word superconductor, first thing you probably think of is levitation, like floating islands in Avatar or maglev trains. You may even know they are what make MRIs possible, are in many cell phone towers, and are being used to build quantum computers. But did you know that their mere existence is one of the biggest mysteries in the universe? No one knows how to design them, and nobody can predict what material is superconducting. The only way to find out is to go in the lab, make them ourselves, and find out. Metals, like copper and gold, conduct electricity very well, but still with resistance, generating heat and losing energy. The longer you make a metal wire, or the more current you try to pump through it, the more it heats up, which is why it takes so many fans to keep your computer cool. Superconductors, on the other hand, are fundamentally different. They can conduct electricity without any loss over any distance. How? We know some things, and we don't know a lot more. We know that in superconductors, electrons don't behave independently, but instead pair together into what we call Cooper pairs. These pairs of electrons behave like bosons, not fermions, meaning they can all occupy the same single quantum mechanical ground state, something that normal electrons cannot do. This is just one example of how counterintuitive superconductors are. For a very short while, it seemed like room temperature superconductivity had been found in high pressure hydrides and LK99. However, we were not able to replicate those results. Today, physicists from around the world are joining forces here in Leiden at the Lorenz Hiraeus workshop on superconductivity to try to figure out its mysteries. It's a very exciting time. In the last decade, we've had major breakthroughs in controlling superconductivity, demonstrating the superconducting diode effect, electrical gate control, and discovering layered materials that can maintain superconductivity to extremely high magnetic fields. All of these were thought to be impossible not very long ago. What's enabled these advances? What's the impact to science and society? And what comes next? 20 years ago, graphite was exfoliated using scotch tape to create graphene, a single layer of carbon atoms. Today, we have access to a whole library of 2D materials, and because of that, the number of known superconductors has exploded. Not only are these layers interesting on their own, but by combining them into stacks, the possibilities for making new materials are endless. Why and how do electrons pair together in these exotic structures? Is it the usual vibrations of the crystal lattice, called phonons? Or is it something completely new, like spin fluctuations, plasma oscillations, or some unknown mechanism? There's plenty of evidence that superconductivity in 2D is really different than in bulk. One recent advance is double layer graphene, which suddenly becomes superconducting when twisted to a very specific magic angle. Why? We have guesses, but we don't really know. There are many other tuning knobs, only possible in 2D, including stacking order and orientation, environmental screening, gating, and much more. These tuning knobs allows us to study superconductivity from different angles, bringing us closer to an understanding of the mystery of superconductivity. Now that we have all these superconductors, can we actually make them work for us? Can we, for example, use a gate which applies an electric field to turn superconductivity on or off, just like in a transistor in our computers, for example? This is very challenging. Normal conductors shield electric fields so they cannot penetrate the material. Superconductors are even harder to gate, which is why everybody thought it is not possible to use electric fields to control them. But it actually works. It is possible to turn superconductivity off using a gate by reducing the supercurrent that a wire can sustain while keeping the superconducting temperature the same. But do we understand what's going on? Is the superconductivity actually reduced by the field, or is there a secret secondary mechanism at play? Also, can we turn the superconducting on-off switch into a functional transistor and logic circuits? Can superconducting diodes even exist? And how would they behave? These are examples of big open questions in the field. The superconducting diode is another knob of control for superconductivity. In general, superconductivity has no directional preference. The superconducting diode effect was first observed in the 80s. However, it was ignored for just being a curiosity in a specific device configuration. It took some luck and perceptive scientists to notice. Only recently has the superconducting diode effect been observed in multiple platforms, like in the niobium vanadium tantalum superlattices or the niobium bromide josephson junctions, among others, giving hope that it can be harnessed in useful ways. Now, this field has really exploded, with new papers being published almost every day, trying to disentangle the mysteries of where this diode effect originates. 
So you see that even after 114 years after the discovery of superconductivity, we are still discovering new phenomena that we don't understand. Underlying all of these discoveries are materials and the tools and methods used to make them, whether adaptations of semiconductor technologies, new ways to stack atomically thin layers, or the creation of new superconductors. If there is one thing I have learned over the last two decades in the field of superconductivity, it's that it is impossible to predict the future. There is always that observation that seems to come out of nowhere and transforms the field. I am excited not just for the fundamental discoveries that will occur over the next decade, but to see how the discoveries of this decade will permeate science and society. For example, diodes and gating enable superconducting electronics, providing a factor of 100 times the efficiency and speed of semiconductors by cutting the energy cost of compute to zero and leaving only the energy cost of cooling that exists for both, giving rise to greener information and computing technologies. Ultra-thin, high-field superconductivity will transform the way we sense and measure the world around us, leading to further advances in technology and society.